Welcome to Sierra Club Chronicles. New Mexican rancher Tweedy Blancet noticed her cattle dying at an alarming rate. She soon discovered oil and gas companies were leaving a toxic mess on the land they shared with grazing cattle. Now Tweedy and other ranchers are fighting to save their cattle and their way of life. You know, my ranch is located in the northwest portion of the four corners of New Mexico and run cattle on 32,000 acres of BLM land. Oh, girls. Oh. Oh, ladies. We love being ranchers. We love the long hours, working in the hot sun, working in the cold winter, working with aggravating cattle. Get on. Jeez. It's not for everybody. I would begin to tell you that there are a lot of people that aren't suited for it. It was the thing I grew up wanting to do. It was just in my blood. I've always said, you know, I have a college education, but I chose to be a rancher. You know, it was a real tough decision for me to sell the, the ideal herd that I'd been trying to build all my life. It was a, a sickening decision. So far, I've had seven calves this summer dying, and two cows that died, and one of the six. So that's a total of seven animals. That's all my profit there, right off the top, that they just took out of my pocket. It was a good life for us, you know. It's a good environment to bring up your kids. We have two daughters, and uh, both of them were brought up around cattle. They know how to ride horseback, and they, uh, they can take care of animals, they're responsible. Hey, Ruru. And we take pride and joy of ranching. That's, we'd like to live off the land and make a living off of it and take care of it. That's all we know how to do. And I've had this vision for a long time, you know, but that was our goal, to retire and just run our cows and make a good living off of it. And that's not the case anymore. Push them? Yep. Ho, oh, girls. The oil and gas came in in the 1950s. The oil and gas brought a lot of jobs, brought a lot of work. It was one of those things that it was a real good partnership and it was it was well received in the community and has been actually until very recently. This is this is ridiculous. This is a travesty. What you see down here is the closing of a coal bed methane pit. Um, I think you really want to get a picture of him dragging that lining. You've got to get a picture of him dragging that lining out, just ripping it out. Everything that's happening down there is a complete violation of the rules and regulations for the Bureau of Land Management. What you have in, in those pits is not only spilled diesel and diesel contamination and oil byproducts, plus all types of drilling muds and acids, you could even see the sheen on the surface from here, the contamination in there. You know, this is a company that is contracted to come in here and dry up this pit. And the easiest way for them to do it, to save hauling that last two or three truckloads of water or is pull that liner out and that water will sink right into the soil. So that contamination is going to go down through the soil and into this arroyo that drains right there and there's natural springs there that run into the river all year long. People like us and all up and down this river, we don't have anything but well water and the well water's from 30 to 60 feet deep. Why, they're putting it right into the water table. Exactly. When the gas is brought to the surface, it is co-mingled with what's called produced water. And that material, that liquid, is separated out from the gas. That produced water contains high concentrations of volatile organics such as benzene, which is known to cause cancer in humans, xylene, toluene. 
If cattle come in contact with it, they drink it and are made ill. If it gets into the soil, it has a high salt content, which disrupts any vegetation growth. This is what's happening all over San Juan Basin and the Rocky Mountain West. The oil and gas industry and the government entities that are supposed to be protecting the land and the water and the people are turning a blind eye. Uh, Steve, this is Tweety Blancet, and let me tell you, you might not be so good after we finish talking. I've got a major breach. Wherever you have public lands, it comes under the jurisdiction of BLM. The Bureau of Land Management grants leases for grazing. So the cattlemen, if they receive a lease, can actually graze their cattle. The Bureau of Land Management also grants the authority to companies to drill and produce oil and gas from public lands. It's what they call multiple use land. That means that hunters are supposed to be able to use it if they have access. Bird watchers are supposed to be able to use it. Hikers are supposed to be able to use it. What you can see here is this is airborne pollution that's just come down on this rock, started to discolor it. You can see the same thing on the soil. There's the real soil color underneath. It's covered the grasses. It's covered everything. It's just smothering the vegetation. Um, appears to sterilize the soil. What you can't see is how bad it smells. The problem with dual lease lands is that the rancher or the farmer who owns and has the right to use the land on the top for grazing or farming and who owns the water doesn't own what's underneath. And the owner of the subsurface rights can allow the extraction of minerals in a way that completely ruins the value of the farmer or the ranch. And there's nothing the farmer or rancher can do about it. Most of the leases in this quadrant of New Mexico were sold in the 40s and 50s before any of the environmental legislation, really. The term compliance comes into debate quite a bit. The federal land leases are from the American people because the federal lands belong to all of us. It's incumbent upon those of us who are federal leasees to take care of the land and protect that advantage that we've been given. What we have is a real, it's not typical of your American ranches on federal land because ours has been in the family for six generations. Well, my people homesteaded here in the late 1870s and early 1880s. Then when Tweety and I, after we had married, why I bought a grazing allotment here on top that tied into part of the old homesteads and we've been here since 1971. My dad is 83 years old, and he's done nothing but ranch all his life, and his dad done the same thing, and his great-grandpa done the same thing, so I'm the fifth of the generation of the ranching family. This is a real unique place in the San Juan Basin because it's got the Apaches, the Navajos, the Utes, the Spanish, the Anglos. Everybody was living basically off the land. Our entertainment was to go up there on the Carson National Forest and gather wild horses, and that was our riding horses. We didn't have uh, store-bought horses or horses that we could buy in town, you know. We had to catch our own, tame them, and ride them. She walks like she hurt someplace, I don't know where. That's Cal 111. And I think she is sick. She acts almost identical to the other one that we autopsied. The biggest bunch I've lost is 20 calves that aborted at one time. We found uh, four cows that were dead on within probably 30 feet of each other. Many times the animal lost hair, they aborted, or they became sterile so that they didn't rebreed. Um, many times they just died. Oftentimes, it'd kill a cow on the spot. You might drive onto a location, there'd be six or seven head of cows dead there. There's very little water in northwestern New Mexico. When they see an open a container of water, they go to it, not realizing that sometimes it's deadly. 
most all the well heads leaked, so if there's water pool there, they drink the contaminated water. The compressor pans are a great source of contamination because there's usually antifreeze and oil on them. Every time I go up on my range, I have found one or two places that have the same thing that I've been fighting for the last seven or eight years. You know, it doesn't make sense to turn out 200 head of mother cows and then turn them out and poison them. You know, you would arrest somebody if they poisoned a dog. We started running tests and autopsies on our animals and found high levels of ingested petrocarbons. Chris Velasquez and Tweety Blanchett and her husband have, uh, have some numerous problems with the oil and gas industry. Habitat fragmentation, destroying the grazing, livestock being killed, stock ponds and surface waters being contaminated. So basically it's, it's not economical for them to actually run a grazing lease on public land. It doesn't come easy, you know, and I'm 53 years old. But this kind of cattle that I got behind me with the genetics that, that we put into them, uh, you just can't make it happen overnight. It's taken a lifetime to do it. You know, my dad, you know, he spends all his time raising cows, and when they do that, he loses out on money. We lose out on our money, you know, for the next year for the cows to, you know, the feed for the cows and stuff like that. It's just, it's hard on the family if, it, if they're not reimbursing you for what they did for the cows. But the reality is, have to set in some time for us on what we're going to do exactly with it. If we're going to sell it or keep it and just hold on to it, and hopefully things will change. And we intended to go into the later years in our life on a ranch that had been a legacy for our family. And we worked the 40 years of our marriage to that end goal, and it's gone. We spent the most productive years of our life building to no avail. The few cows that we have left are our token resistance. I would imagine we will end up taking what we can take and salvaging what we can salvage and leave here and go buy a place where we can just ranch and quit fighting it day and night. Because I don't have any cows anyway now. They've driven me that far out of the business, I just will relocate and start over. If you want to take that and carry it just a little bit further, it's our cattle, so it's a personal loss. And, and that might be significant, but if you want to look at the whole picture, it also affects all the wildlife. The contamination starts off with the squirrels and the pack rats. Rabbits, they're getting affected. They're dying right there on location. And then it'll go to the deer and the elk, and then the cows that affect that, and then if people happen to eat that meat and they're contaminated, it's probably going even to the humans. We're not sure on that. And that's how come I've been having the vet test our cattle, because I do not want something like that to get into the food chain. The contaminants are very serious. They can kill you, and they're very toxic, carcinogenic, mutagenic. There's all kinds of technological names that basically, if you drink them or wildlife drinks them, you'll get very sick or you'll die from them. And it seems like the BLM and the oil companies don't care about it. It's none of their concern. The Bureau of Land Management is very ineffective on their reclamation or, or control or environmental control of the industry. They're there to facilitate the industry and expedite permits and drilling. But when it comes on the environmental, cleanup, protection, wildlife, habitat, they're not existent. They basically do not do anything, hardly at all. I'm hesitant to say that the Bureau of Land Management has a mandate to appease the energy industry, but they are certainly considered, a, the, the energy industry is a client of the Bureau of Land Management, and they are customer service oriented. The violations in this county, there's a significant number by my thresholds. There are good people in the Bureau of Land Management and not so good people, but they are certainly under quite a bit of pressure from this administration to do what it takes to get the oil out of the ground. As part of the executive branch, I work within a line organization. So I have directors in Washington who take their orders from a secretary who takes their orders from the president and it comes in a direct line down to where I sit. There has been such a tremendous boom. When you have more than 35, 
1,000 wells in one area, and that is to double within the next 20 years. There is no way that any entity can control, maintain, or enforce the regulations that are on the books to protect the land. We have two surface compliance people which are dedicated strictly to assuring that the reclamation and the reseeding is done correctly on the new drilling activities. And we're getting a few more people in, hopefully within the next six months, which will double that two surface compliance folks to four. We're also getting an additional two permitting type natural resource specialists. So the permitting should accelerate also. So now they're going to really be rubber stamping and expediting the process. So there will be no review, no process of trying to try and mitigate or minimize the damage. It's going to be in a fast track. Uh, I, I hear the word, uh, oh, expedite quite a bit. You know, the new energy bill and the combined with the war and the hurricanes have made it so that a, a rancher fighting oil and gas at the present time is uh, spitting in the wind. They've won it all. When we made the decision to sell, we also made the decision to fight. I formed alliances with environmental groups and conservation groups and other ranching groups to bring the issues of oil and gas to the American people. If you guys are dirty up here on top, what are you guys doing on the bottom where we can't see it? And I guarantee you, you're dirty down there and it's contaminating this water. They never take responsibility. They act like a big, spoiled kid. And if you spank them, they cry like hell. The San Juan Citizens Alliance is a grassroots organization. The people involved are people who care deeply about these issues. Tweedy Blancett served in the state legislature on the Republican side of things. For most of my life, my leanings have been Democrat. But as Tweedy points out, the issues we're discussing cross these political boundaries. I like the way Tweedy refers to us. She calls us the unholy alliance. Even though we come from a lot of different perspectives, we're all Americans, and we really care about our land and our water and the people that are on the land. And so we have so much in common that the tree huggers and the fish and game people, the hunters and the fishermen and the conservationists and the ranchers and the farmers, can come together, and that's what oil and gas has done. Throughout the Rocky Mountain West, they've made allies of people who wouldn't even have spoke to each other. You know, I think that Americans, regardless of what party they belong to or whether they live in a city or a rural area, want smarter energy solutions. They want to move into the future. This is a country that looks ahead, and our energy policy is looking backwards. True Republicans care about the environment. Now, we believe in free enterprise, and we believe in being able to be all you can be. But we also believe that our stock and trade, as Americans, is in the land and the resources on that land. And the only way that I think you can be a good Republican is to protect those resources for the future generations. I have thought for a long time how valuable our public lands are. I think this is something tremendously valuable that we have in America. You can go out there, I can go out there almost unfettered. It's a wonderful experience to have that sort of freedom. I don't have to own 10,000 acres spread to experience the good things of the wild environment. 
Well, we reported a violation to the Bureau of Land Management today on the, the filming and the, the ripping out of the lining, and they haven't shown up yet. When they won't go and look at their problems, it's really infuriating to me. If you've ever dealt with ranchers, they're dealing with some rugged individual alpha folks there too. So once you get them riled up, it's kind of tough to get them cooled down. When we find problems, we take the BLM out there and show them, take the old companies. And I'm so sick and tired of doing that over and over and over the same issue. Once they get their blood up, it's tough. I've got to where I just boil over when it starts. And you saw Tweety, she's getting the same way. Tomorrow, what we're going to see is the Bureau of Land Management will be up here to do what they call a scoping. They're being paid to be there, that's their job. We point out the problems, they agree it shouldn't be happening, and they will go so far as to say, well, it's not happening now and nothing makes you happy. And they insinuate that you might be lying. Then I get real angry. You know, that's the one thing that a rancher's word has always been his bond. And if you want to fight with me, well, I cuss my kids or my wife or my dog or call me a liar. And this is why we need to get this straightened out because it's happening all over. It's not just happening right here in this area. It's happening to me. And this is why all my cows are tested and positive with oil because they're drinking some of that stuff that's up there. We want it corrected. We don't want to keep on doing it every day and calling you guys and calling the old companies. You need to hammer it down. We don't want to do it. I want to run my business, I let them do their business, I but I want my business to be also protected. I agree with you. I just don't have the people to be able to handle it all. Yeah. And so the best thing I can do is react to complaints. They're sick right now, right. I know that, because right. I got a lab test. And that's what really pisses me off, that Steve tells me that there's nothing wrong out here, and damn it, there isn't. Ray, it's the same old BS, different day. That's the only thing that's changed, is the date. I do get it. I do get it. It's no secret what we want. We want the mess cleaned up, and we want to be able to ranch and farm. I mean, if they're doing what they're doing, and, and you need to go look at it, because you saw it before you saw the relocation. I mean, it's right on the edge of the arroyo. It's not 100 yards from the Animus River. It, 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 it's ridiculous. If I had done to my grazing permit what oil and gas has done, I would have been pulled off of it. If I had created the surface disturbance, the erosion, the pollution of the water, the noxious weeds, by my bad actions, I would not have a grazing permit. Am I wrong? I'm neither one of these. Why don't you go show me this torn pit liner? Okay, sure. Be glad to. Okay. Yesterday there was lining in here, Buster. Today. They pulled all the plastic out, and now they're stirring everything up. Recognize what's going on here? Oh, they're making a heck of a mess. They're supposed to suck all that liquid out before they do this, but all, they got all that uh, liquid in there, and they're just mixing it up with the dirt. This is hard to watch. Yeah. I mean, we're standing right here looking at it, and this stuff goes right into that arroyo and right into the Animus it. River. You tell me, Ray, when the pit and the liner's there, it's supposed to be folded in yes. and buried. Yes. It's not supposed to be stirred like this, right? Correct. So we allow them to continue to stir it in? We're not going to stop anything? And this is the problem is this is uh, on a private land. It's not a BLM site. We don't have any legal power to do gotcha. anything. The United States needs the oil and gas. This is a prime example of what they're trying to do, and this is just the beginning, I think. With a new energy bill that they just passed, this is just the beginning of it. As a citizen, I'm concerned. I am absolutely concerned because of, I see the water running, I do, and I understand the municipalities that are getting their water out of here, I do. 
real clear here is that this is on, on um, private land and we don't have any authority here. So as long as you know that. Uh... We're in the courts. The fight has gone to the courts and the fight is in the media and the fight is in grassroots organizations from border to border. And the more people that join and understand what's happening are going to be more people that we can count on to step up the plate and say, no, enough is enough. This is how close. This is the Bureau of Land Management land right here. All of this this way. This right there is private. And the Arroyo is on BLM. And this is the source of the warm water spring that never freezes up. And the oil and gas company made a big mistake with us because they took everything. And when you take everything that a person has worked their life for, you make them dangerous. One of the things that is both depressing and exciting about America's energy dilemma is that it's doing damage to this country in so many different ways. It's destroying ranches, it's giving kids asthma, it's polluting our fisheries with mercury. It's frankly a considerable part of the story of the mess we're in in the Middle East. But the smarter energy solutions can reverse all of those problems. And if we were producing wind power, on ranches in the rural west. There'd be jobs for steel workers here in the United States. There'd be clean electricity for people in the cities. There'd be lower rates of asthma. There'd be higher rates of economic growth in rural areas. And we could have beef and electricity forever from the same land. For the latest information on this case and how you can be part of the unusual alliances protecting our wildlands, please visit us at sierraclubtv.org. Funding provided by the Ford Foundation, with additional support from the Sierra Club Foundation.